You're listening to RTI Audio, powered by Rocky Top Insider. This is Pancakes and Bacon with VFL, Tyler Kerbison, and Reed Bacon. Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Pancakes and Bacon. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Curvison, joined with Reed Bacon. Uh, got a good podcast for you. Uh, obviously, bad news with the Vols losing, uh, but we're going to break down the Creighton game. We're going to break down the Purdue game, uh, talk about a season wrap up and where we see Ricky B moving forward. All that good stuff. Again, apologies. My Wi-Fi is crappy right now. I have AT&T. I think those solar flares got to me. Don't know what's going on with it, but yeah, my my, it's very blurry. Okay? Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and apologize on the front. I'll apologize at the end as well. Um, But before we jump into anything Vols, anything basketball, let's check in on our favorite co-host. Reed, how are we doing, bud? Kyler, you <laughs> said that opening because you know what happened today. So, <clears throat> Reed. brutal. <laughs> Reed, Reed, Reed. Brutal, brutal, brutal day for your boys. So, I am currently standing uh, at, at my new house. So, Megan, and my fiance, and I, we closed on our new home. Very exciting times. We closed on Thursday. Uh, spent Friday. I had already taken Friday off for Good Friday to go to Mass and stuff, but it worked out that we were able to close on Thursday, start moving stuff on Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday, all that good stuff. So uh, I'm standing because my back is absolutely horrendous. So <laughs> I I had my worst back blowout, and yes, I know how that sounds. So yeah. I had my Listen, worst. We all know Zachy came down to Knoxville and gave you that business. <laughs> <laughs> Set you back a couple days. <laughs> Just hey, like I to can, us. I can I can promise you there's two people that would not do that to me. Zach Eady's one and that other loser number two uh, from <laughs> Purdue. I would I would I would gladly have paid money if I had a good back to get in a cage with that number two from Purdue. And I refuse <laughs> to say uh, his name, not number two. I don't know his name, lawyer or lawyer. I'll, I'll say his name. I will not say the other guy's name. There's been a reason that there's not been a post from the Pancakes and Bacon Twitter, which you and I both run. Yeah. But there's a reason that there's not been because I'll just because of the because of that game. And I was like, do I want to do game takeaways? Do I want to record a quick video just to kind of get stuff out there? I said, no, not right now. And then I waited later that night. And I said, no, I'm still not ready. Then I was going to do one yesterday. I was like, no, I'll just do the pod. And we'll get to the Purdue game. But um, I'm excited to hear what you have to say. I know what social media has been saying because obviously Lent's over. I've been on social media, so I've been seeing it. Anyways, yeah. about, about the back, I think it was a combination of stuff. I think it was – all the golf that we played and all the driving that we did um, a couple weekends ago for the yeah, bachelor to party. Pair, to pair all that golf with a move-in, that's a recipe for disaster. A recipe for disaster is exactly right. Literally exactly right because my back has been pretty solid. And I'm thinking not only the golf, but one thing that really, really hurts is when I ride. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I can – do so many things, but if I ride in a car or drive in a car for extended period of times and I don't get to lay flat or I do not have my towel on my lower back, then I can Mm. feel it seriously. And I didn't, I didn't drive. My dad drove to to, almost a pebble to Pinehurst, but I didn't bring a towel in the back. And that was a mistake. It's like, I'm really good about doing stuff to keep preventative. Yeah. But then, like, once it starts feeling better, you start ease off. So, like, every day that I go and work out, I start it with a core video and a back in my back therapy exercise always. But then, like, when the when I, my back does feel better, then I, I take the towel away when I'm driving. And it's just like little stuff like that. So, I think that's been I didn't do a lot of the moving, I paid movers to do some of the stuff, but there were still a couple things that we got here, specifically flower planters that are straight up like all cement. Them sun guns are heavy. I got the first one fine. 
The second one, I think I got a little lazy, didn't lift with the legs, and I mm. felt a little tweak, but I was still okay. Mm. And so it was like Saturday, Sunday hurt, but it wasn't bad. And I woke up this morning, was getting ready for a call at 9 30. Uh, so yeah. it was like I woke up, I woke up at like 8 30, got up, was getting coffee, started looking at work stuff, even moved some stuff in the washer and dryer. Very tight, very tight, very sore, but like <laughs> Gucci, like still do it. All of a sudden, I'm like get, about to get ready for the call, and I come to sit on a little ottoman in here, a little footrest, a little ottoman, because I can't bend over all the way to put socks on. And I get the left one on, and it's tight and it's good, and all of a sudden, I just go down to start getting the right one, and all of a sudden, my back just – it just – it tightens and it goes. But this is like pain that I'm experiencing. You remember when it happened a year or so ago pretty bad at mm -hmm. – um, at orange theory but that was like i could walk i could drive home like i could do stuff it hurt bad but it was not like this like this is probably the worst it's been either ever or probably since i had my other house in 2021 but kyler i have never in my life been on a floor and did not know how to get up i mean it was like i wasn't i wasn't scared because it's like yo like i'm gonna like i'm, I'm gonna be able to crawl to a phone but everywhere either way i moved it hurt so bad so i laid on the floor luckily i had my phone next to me i called my boss i was like hey man like i'm on my floor i can't get up like i'm not going to be able to get on this call at 9 30. um you know it's like so basically, <laughs> so basically long story short i'll wrap it up i was able to finally i laid there for literally 25 30 minutes finally was able to get up stand up excruciating pain got to the my phone got to the couch and literally just called my mom i was like hey i've called the doctor they're calling me medicine in i need you to go get it i need you to bring it to me my mom did thank goodness so it was just a couple muscle relaxers and then I, those basically i ate took those and i slept all day so it was like i was out of it um uh, and then when i woke up it's felt a little bit better like obviously i can stand and yeah if I walk, it's still very, very ginger. But Megan came over after school and I literally felt like an 80 year old. Like she had to help me get undressed so that I could shower. Yeah. Then I then I showered. I was able to do all the showering on my own. She did have to help me dry me off some. But then like she had to help me get dressed again. Like I mean, because you've had back issues. But the thing about back is like you can't bend. So like I could go down to the ground right now, but I'm doing a squat like I'm all legs. It's a yep. squat down to grab something and come up. You're not bending over at all. Like if I bend over right now, I might get fall down <laughs> listen, again. Listen, I I'm all over it. I'm I I know exactly where you were. I know the pain that you felt. I know the feelings that you had of helplessness because I've been there. I had that bulging disc in college, and when it hits, it hits hard and it yeah. takes you out. Um, yes. And I remember the second time it happened to me. That was the worst one because it Where was something you? really, it was something really stupid. I was hanging out with buddies, drinking on Memorial Day uh, weekend, and like threw a dude into the pool. <laughs> and when I picked him up, it just like in the back, uh, just bulged again. Like my disc bulged. That's what happened. And this was. Uh, redshirt sophomore year ET or sophomore year redshirt freshman yeah yeah I think so um and then like I was crawling on the ground I couldn't like walk regular to get to a spot and then what pool what pool like you at? I was don't worry about what pool I was at I was well, hanging out with people but well, the reason um, I the reason that I, I do not that, hang out with anymore. Let's just say that. Uh, okay. The reason I asked that was because then I was like, were there? I was asking that. I and I, I get. I, I know where you're talking about now, but I'm guessing if that's where you were, then like, did they help you get up? Like, what, like, how'd you get home? Well, uh, everyone was drinking a little bit, so I don't think everyone was necessarily as concerned with Kyler at that yeah. point. Um, yeah. I was able to make it to a chair with an ottoman and kind of like squeeze them together and lay flat on it and then waited for my sister and Brianne to kind of get there. And then like they had to help me to the car. 
helped me out of the car once we got home to the couch, lay on the couch. Like it was, yeah, it was horrible. Um, what did you do? To all that to say, yeah, I during that time period of both back, like both times it flared and me trying to do recovery and like get all the stuff back. Like there was no bending at the waist. I could not touch my toes. That was not like, I was not bending at the waist at all. Um, Because it was just, that's where the bulge was coming out the back. So it was just like, you're, you're almost setting up for it to happen again. Um, So it was all just knee bend if I needed to pick something up off the ground, my back was staying straight and I was just squatting straight down. And guys like my buddies used to give me a hard time. Like, I, like you're drop down, get your Eagle on. <laughs> like, Seriously. Cause, cause, cause it legit. It's like when you like the, the video vixens you see, and they literally just drop straight down to the ground. Like that's how I would have to pick up things. There's no bending over to pick it up. It was really just, like squat straight down. Um, What'd you end up doing but, when you got yeah. home that that time where you just lay? How long were you on the couch for? Did you get muscle relaxers or what? Would you have to take? Uh, I got some, uh, just like ibuprofen, Advil, whatever, and laid on the couch and I slept there that night. And then it was better in the morning. Um, but obviously, I was on the team at that time, so yeah, it was like once I woke up. Went into the facility. Hey, this happened. This is what's going on. And then that is when I ended up getting a cortisone shot after the second time. So they set that up like a week later and I got that shot and it was immediately better. But for like the week, week and a half before it, I used crutches to walk around. Cause it was like, if I put, I think my left leg on the ground, it was just like shooting pain yeah. up into my back. Yeah. And then I'm didn't t- miss a damn snap of practice and fucking played every game that year. So how about that? you beast, bro. The beast. Um, so I, I will say that that is some of the worst pain I've ever had was getting the shots in my back because I oh, went in and out. Oh, they did? See, I didn't get knocked out. I, I went in, and you lay down. You think you're getting one shot. It's a series of, like, five or six. And the guy's like, hey, you got to lay. You got to be really relaxed. You can't tighten up. And he was like, it's going to feel bad because we stick you with the needle, and then you're going to feel the stuff coming in. And I'm like, he's like, you got to relax. I'm like, God. Like, and you're laying there. You're trying to relax the best you can. But when you feel it, it you just naturally tighten. It's And I thought it was one, and there's five or six. And – it helped. It did not help as much as I thought it would. And I don't know if that's because shooting in the wrong nerves or whatever. the case. I don't know. I don't know. But that pain, I'll never forget that pain of getting those shots. It was awful. It was awful, mm-hmm. awful, awful. So I'm just going to be resting a lot. Like I said, I'm doing much better now than I was at, you know, 10 o'clock this morning. Like I said, I got I, I was on the couch from when I finally got off the floor and on the couch. I was there from 10 to three or four. And I, I just couldn't, I couldn't move. And then finally enough rest, enough medicine. You can, then I rolled to the floor. I literally, you can see we have a, it was a, a big, thick, almost like blanket, but a big, thick furniture cover that they used to move the dining room table and it's folded and they left it here. So I like rolled on the ground on it just to like lay on my, my belly to try to mm. like get. So anyways, but, um, I'm excited to hear what you think about about these games. Um, yeah. And I'm actually enjoying doing this because it's getting my mind off of everything. And I feel worthless because I didn't get to work today. And, you know, so now it's like I'm getting to I'm getting to talk about stuff. So I I, I said, well, I thought we'd lose a Creighton. Obviously, I was wrong. What, what did you think about the Creighton game? We can just talk, touch on it decently quick. I mean, I I – listen – I'm not going to say that I I know ball, but before this tournament started, I said I was more nervous about the Texas game than I was a Creighton game. And I feel like that came to fruition. Like, Texas felt closer than the Creighton one. Once we got over the Texas, I felt very confident going into Creighton. And then it really was like, Purdue is a monster. What 
like hopefully we can ruin their season. I would love to be able to do that to them, but didn't think if I was a betting man that we would beat them. So I like, I really feel like this is kind of what I felt could happen um, from the beginning, but yeah, going into Creighton, I felt really good. And then just watching the guys, I was like, I'm loving it. I, I like, I, I loved Meshack. I loved uh, Rainey. I loved their effort. Um, Josiah Jordan James with just massive points of like huge blocks. I thought we were running the floor well. Like Creighton made me feel good about this team. And I was like, this is what I'm talking about because here was the next, hey, this is the chance of, of, you know, this team pooping to bed and not being able to make it further. Um, but like Triple J starts shooting threes, uh, just absolutely draining the shot clock on defense, just making Creighton hold it for the full, full time over and over and over. And they couldn't get a good shot look. And like that wears a team down. Uh, so it it made like it made me like all right I like this is good for me this is what I like we made it to the elite eight we did we we ended up in the realm of where we were all season like you had said multiple times get to the elite eight we were in the top eight of teams all year that's where we should finish we should not finish top sixteen we should not finish in the top thirty two uh. So I, you know, I was very happy with the Creighton game for sure. Um, I mean, as we go uh, into it, I, you know, like I said, hey, click, uh, a, click, click it, click it down on the right side. Oh yeah, I guess we can go into it. Um, Triple J, Rainy, and Mayshack really I felt stepped up during this game and made huge plays all throughout. And that was one where you look at the team, you think one, two, three is Dalton, Adu, Ziegler, and the other guys are just kind of there. But then I just see effort out of these guys. I just see hitting big shots um, at, at different times out of all three of them. I see just, so just meshing very well offensive rebounds when they're needed, like that kind of stuff makes you feel really good about where a team's at. When like the fourth, fifth and sixth guy on your roster are putting in that kind of work. Um. So yeah, I just liked it. I thought, you know, I thought it was a little bit of a test for what Purdue was going to do with Zach and the, the fact that Creighton did have that big guy um, and they did want to get him the ball. Now, big difference. Their big guy was 6'11", Zach Eady 7'4". Their big guy was the athletic try and move around. Zach Eady is the lumbering wall that's just in your way. But it made me like, okay, here's a little like test run a little bit as you go into Purdue, because honestly, the whole time I was watching that Creighton game, I was thinking about Purdue. I was like, how can, how can we use what we're doing here to better prepare for Purdue? Like it are some of these guards on Creighton getting us ready for their little guard, little white dude guards on Purdue, just running past people and that kind of thing. Like, is this getting us ready for Zach Eady? Cause the whole time going into Purdue, I'm like, Zach, he's going to get buckets. He's going to score. He's going to draw fouls. Guys are probably going to foul out. How long can we keep our guys in there? Right. How long can we keep a do and a walk in there? Because I see, you know, this Creighton game and it's like a walk of fouls out pretty quick. Right. Or gets into foul trouble pretty quick. And it's, like, ah, oh, crap, man. Like, this isn't even the big guy who creates fouls like like Edie is, and you're already in foul trouble. Um, 
So I was I literally was watching that Creighton game like prepping for Purdue in a way like okay how can we take this into the next game? Sounds I mean, like you were, were sounds you like you were going through. Yeah. It sounds like you were confident watching it that we would win. <laughs> I was thinking, thinking, thinking that about Purdue already. So Creighton, you know, I was nervous going into it. Uh, we we start we start off back and forth, back and forth. Um, you know, you got you got two great white hopes on the hoops with Dalton and Baylor. Is that Baylor number fifty five for Creighton? What's his last name? Uh, yeah, he was a baller, dude. Baylor Shireman. I mean, he yeah, was. Cole, he that's was white he, boys. Yeah, he was. Uh, <laughs> that's what they call us. <laughs> that's right. The pancakes and bacon. Cold ass white boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, but 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 it's just like it's back and forth, back and forth, and yeah. then Tennessee has that run, kind of at the start. Hey, you know, baby. Bit yeah, start right into the third quarter or third quarter, right kind of at the start of the the second half. I'm like, okay, that made me feel a lot better because then, then even if Creighton does have a run, you give yourself a little leeway and then you just kind of have to answer a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. But um, Zakai, I've got it pulled up here. First off, Zakai with playing the minutes that he's played, kudos to him. That's very, uh, very yeah, important. the entire game. It's 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 impressive, dudes. Dudes on another level. Uh, Eighteen points for him with six assists, four rebounds. Dalton gave you twenty six five and four. Josiah, as you already mentioned, which I'll get to him. Fifteen two and four, and then Mayshack and Tobe. They did what they did. They came in and they made a difference in a game. Now, Jemai Mayshack only had four points. Dude's getting eight eight rebounds, two assists, and then. Uh, Tobey's in for only 21 minutes, and he gives you five rebounds, five points. And and I always feel like this tournament, whether it was a Texas game or Creighton or uh, even a couple moments in Purdue, I felt like Tobey's moments were big. I felt like Jemai Meshack's yeah. other moments are big. It's just, it's just, can we keep Tobey in the game? Can he not foul out? Like when he's yeah. in the game, he makes impact plays. I don't, I don't want to hijack Creighton and take it to Purdue just yet, but I do have to make a comment, and I need to talk with somebody that knows hoops because there was a part in the Purdue game where I'm not going to say his name was trying to back down Tobe, and he can't move him. He literally can't move him, and the announcer's like, well, that's a foul. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense in my brain. That's why I need to talk with a coach or, or somebody in hoops. And I have a buddy who I've mentioned before who played college hoops and – was a grad assistant with Conzo out at, at Cal, but like it doesn't make sense to me. Is 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 the defender not allowed to that same space? Like if you're trying to back someone down and you can't move them, that that shouldn't be a foul. Like you just can't move them, pass it out and keep it moving. And yeah. so that that really frustrated me. But anyways, back to Creighton. Um, you know, I it was it was a good game. It was a. It wasn't a heavyweight fight, but it was a good back and forth. Tennessee was the better team. They they executed when they needed to execute. I was very, very impressed with our defense. And that same announcer said, hey, Big Ten, it's physical. It's not Tennessee physical. And and I felt like just the way that our guys get up in you, whether it's Meshack, Triple J, Zakai, Tobe, whoever it is, I mean, they are up in you. And you and I, I remember playing basketball at a very small level. But when you get a guy that's on you like that, and you truly feel like you can't dribble right, left, like there's nothing you can do, it's very defeating. And you almost yeah. feel, you know, it kind of gets in your psyche. But anyways, I just I think that run was the game changer because then you give yourself leeway, and and they hit the shots when they needed to. And stats wise, it's a pretty, I mean, even game. I mean, Tennessee was forty one percent of field goals. Creighton 44 uh, three pointers. Tennessee was 45 percent. Creighton was 47 uh, free throws. Uh, 83 percent for Tennessee. 92 percent for Creighton. Total rebounds. Tennessee 36. Creighton 34. Where we edged them was assist, blocks, steals, turnovers. So once again, in big games, you have to look at some of the fi- more finite stats, and it's. Yeah. Our assists were 16 to their 13. Our blocks, five to their two. Our steals, five to their one. And they had nine turnovers. We had four. So so those are the big, big game changer. And another thing is, Brian, 
uh, Shearmeyer or whatever, he was kind of nowhere to be found in the second half, whether that's good defense on Tennessee's part or whatever the case may be. Now, it was wild, wild when Creighton pulls out a box in one and then a triangle in two. I mean, that's like some – that was like took me back to like Sacred Heart eighth grade basketball. I was like, I didn't even know this was a thing, but they were trying to do it, which I respect it. I Doug McDermott's – or not Doug because he's the son, but the McDermott, the coach, is a good baller. He's like, listen, someone besides Akai – and 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 Dalton's going to beat us. So it was, but anyways, it made yeah, for a great game. Anything they could, right? And I respect that. I respect that. And it, it kind of messed with us for a little bit. They just Dalton's a flamethrower and hit the shots he needed to. Now, anyways, click click that thing down. <laughs> click it down. <laughs> click click it down. What everybody really wants to hear about. Here, Purdue, here's, baby. here here's the deal. I I told you when the bracket came out. It was like, great. You got Purdue, you got Gonzaga, you got Texas, you got these teams that Tennessee has had some sort of relationship with, some sort of tie with. Yeah. And I was like, dude. And I, everyone said Tennessee thought they, they had a pretty good draw. I think our draw was okay. But if we could have gotten in there with a North Carolina or a Duke or uh, a Houston, I would have loved to have seen that more than a UConn or Purdue. And I just had this feeling, Kyler, and it's been a very weird couple days for my fandom. I knew Tennessee was not going to win the Purdue game. I just knew it. Like, I knew we were not going to win. I told people we weren't going to win. I, I was think- I was there with you. I, it was like, if, if we can pull this off, like, it was very much – there's not really a shot here. It, it was very much surprised me if we can pull this off. Um just because of the way Purdue was running through people and because the way big man is. I mean, just so, how he's been treated all year and what he's been able to do on the floor all year, there's just nothing you can do about it. And what happened in the Tennessee-Purdue game was exactly what all of all nation was worried about. And it's one thing that we said. It was two things. It was the man that I refuse to say his name – getting all the calls and and I'll give credit where credit's due. He's a good basketball player. Like he is, he's not just some big lumbering idiot. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not just no. tall. We, we, we've no. had a guy who's tall. We, we've had a Euros who's tall. He, he wasn't this, mm-hmm. this guy knows how to play hoops around the rim. He's got good moves. He gets good positioning, but the, it still doesn't change the fact of that he gets every call and he doesn't get calls against him. And that's the other thing. That is the part that's frustrating. Correct. The fact is there's no way that a guy that size, that's that big, that plays that much, doesn't get a foul called on him. Now, I will say that I wish Tennessee would have taken it at him more. I truly do. And I'm not just saying because we had some where where Zakai would get in and make a bounce pass. Um, and Purdue would either knock it away or Jonas couldn't handle it or Tobey couldn't handle it. And so I get that. I I wish that the guards would have taken it in at his ass. And mm-hmm. and, and it's it's you you can't do it to where it takes over your whole game plan, but you can make a conscious point. And Tennessee did it towards the end. That was one thing. I had Tennessee on a teaser, and so I'm sitting there worried like, yo, I hope we don't start chucking up threes. And then I end up losing this game by more than ten, and I'm going to be pretty frustrated. But 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 Dal- or, uh, Dalton just started getting to the rack on him, and it was just a little too late there at the very end. And that's one thing I wish Tennessee would have done. But then again, like I, I'll hear fans that I would either like I'm assuming I would talk to fans or people would respond to this and be like, "Hey, Reed, yeah, it sounds good for them to drive and try to get fouls on him, but the refs are clearly showing that they're not going to call it." And I would say and- there's some there's some probably truth to that. It's also who he is as a defender. Like, he's not moving. He's not moving his feet. So, like, you can't get the the foul call if he's not moving, if he literally stays still, and he's not jumping. He won't jump. Like, but he didn't have to. He's 7'4". So, like, yeah. he doesn't move his feet well, so he's not moving. He's not leaving the ground when you give a pump fake. Then it's like, how do I draw a foul on this guy? That's the hard part about going in the lane. That is why, you know, 
what we saw all year from Zakai in random moments where we we're like, why are you going into the lane and then just stopping and being like, where do I go with the ball? Instead of trying to go up with it or give it to somebody, what it's like, here is the perfect recipe for for that to happen every time Zakai drove. He'd get close and go, holy hell, that guy's big. I can't do this. And he'd dribble so, around him or turn so back me, around and go back out. Let me, let me, well, first off, I thought he did a good job penetrating and trying to get in because when you do drive like that, you're either going to be able to dish to someone that's, that's kind of shooting behind you, uh, making a cut to the basket or someone who's open on the, on the perimeter. But let me yeah, say this. Yeah, the defenders sank inside. But let me, the guy, so. but, but let, let me say this. Let me say this. You, everyone, no matter your knowledge of hoops, has watched, if you watch enough basketball, you see it. So I'm, I'm driving in and I go in and there's a guy that goes straight up, but I initiate the contact and it bounces me back. Dude's still straight up. I lay it in and one but buckets. I stand up and flex. But realistically, the guy went straight up. DJ Barnes, a guy that I love watching, did it towards the very late end of the Duke game. He goes in. He initiates a contact with his shoulder, bumps back, lays it in and one. And the Duke guy went straight up. Now, he may be a little bit went, but he did not hack him or anything. And DJ Burns is the one that that actually initiated the contact. So that's where those one of those issues where I have a, a problem with basketball. It's like if the offensive guy initiates it, it shouldn't be an and one. There should just be no foul call if the guy does go straight up. So that I say yeah. that to maybe maybe Tennessee could have tried to do that against you know who, but but they didn't. But but the other thing that I was going to mention that the Tennessee fans knew that this could not happen was it couldn't be the Dalton Connect show, and that's ended up what happened. He didn't have a running mate. Everyone said it's fun to watch Dalton go for 30, 33, uh, 40, uh, 28. Like those are fun. Yeah. But you can't, but you cannot, that's not the ultimate best way for Tennessee. And that's what ended up happening. So I'm watching this entire game, going back and first, back, back and forth. First half, we had a chance to take the lead. Uh, we missed it, missed the little bunny right before half. And, I'm just as the game goes on, it just felt like I truly felt like we never had a chance to win the game, and and we're tied down one, down two, maybe take the lead in the second half. But it just felt like it was very difficult for Tennessee to. It's like in football, it was very difficult for Tennessee to get a couple yards, and I felt like Purdue could do whatever they want offensively, and man, I mean, they really it. could. Right, they really exactly. could do whatever they wanted right. offensively, right. and right. it it, it, st- it stemmed around him because. You saw Zakai like three feet behind a Smith just driving to the basket and no one's picking him up because they're trying to box out Edie. You yeah. saw guys just sitting at the three point line wide open because Josiah Jordan James is trying to like give help on Edie. Yeah. yeah. No, I, it, I, no, he I get affected it. every single off defensive possession for us. Like when we're on defense, I, he was affecting it. No matter who scored, I agree. It was. It took me back, unfortunately, to 2013, 14, 15, when my Grizzlies were in their heyday, and we were going up against the Golden State Warriors, and it was so much effort for the Grizzlies to score two, just for Steph to go down and shoot a three and just bang it home. It was. There's just so much effort to get the ball into Zach Randolph, make a move. He goes up, he misses, but then. Marcus Hall gets the rebound, gets a put back. It's like, holy crap, we just grind our ass off of those two steps, dribbles down, that, 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 three, bang. And it's just like that, that style of basketball. But if, and if it wasn't for Dalton, I mean, obviously we're not even in the spot that we need to be, but you can't have Jonas Adu, who unfortunately had a good year. I've been singing his praises all year. Hell, I came on here and said I thought he was a second best player. He was a no show in the tournament. And then, and then he's an absolute no show in this game. He get, I mean, they, they, he got 10 minutes of play because he played so bad. I mean, you, JP, JP Estrella came in and played awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I thought listen, Adu couldn't, couldn't handle, he could not handle Edie. Like, the reason he wasn't playing is some missed shots yeah, right. by him, right. but also defense. Like, right. he was reason. getting worked on defense and all- a Waka having a little bit more strength to him. And then Estrella coming in, did not expect that out of him. He is actually lighter than Adu, 
but the mentality. He was, he was doing what he needed to do. I literally equate it to, and don't take this the wrong way. Do not think that I'm comparing this guy to who I'm about to say, but I had a conversation with Antone Davis who played at Tennessee. Um, while I was there, he was like our VFL personnel guy. And I'd love to talk to him about O-line stuff and everything. And he, in the, when he played in the NFL, had to go against Reggie White. He had to go against him at practice. He played with him for a while and then had to go against him in games. And, you know, just talking to him, picking his brain was like, you know, what is it like to go against a guy like that? And he said, you're not going to win the rep. You just need to die slow. That was it. You're not going to beat him. He's going to beat you. But make it four seconds if you can so the quarterback can get rid of the ball. Like it was like, you just have to die slow. You're going to die, but die slow. And I felt like that's kind of what Estrella was doing. Freshman in there versus the the senior, like bigger guy. And he's like, all right, I'm going to do everything that I can. And if I can make him miss two out of every 10, I'm doing a pretty good job. I agree. I agree completely. And I think it's a great analogy and it's a frustrating thing. It's, I'm not taking anything away from Estrella and I'm not trying to be negative towards Jonas, but the dude literally is a no show in the biggest (laughs) time of the year. He's the biggest. You good? Yeah. Wrong pipe. (coughs) I, uh, I had that happen, I think, on the bachelor party with water. And then I'm not joking. I was up at the club like two weeks ago working. I was in there by myself and I took a sip of water and it hit me and I just threw it right back up. And I was like, thank goodness no one was in here. I'm telling you, when it goes down the wrong way, it's brutal. But you just, it's unfortunate that Jonas had a better year. And um, it's like unfortunate. We've all known these people and all known these players that are good players. But when you need them to be physical or to have that little bit of very overused term of dog mentality like they just they don't have it and that's unfortunate now I don't think that people I think you're kind of born with it it's kind of who you are I don't think you really adopt that maybe he Mm. can do stuff to get a little bit more physical but I I it's just it's a fresh it's bummer that that happened that way and it's awesome that Estrella was able to come in and like you said do what he could because Tobey would have been the best but Tobey can't get out of his own way because he is so strong and whether that's some of the refs doing or he is just too physical. And so that's why Estrella ended up being the best. But anyways, to recap it, we were in that game because of Dalton and some other people. For but sure. it was the, it was the two worst things that Vol Nation was worried about was no name, getting all the calls from refs and not getting anything called against him. And I say no name because I refuse to say his name. And and then it being the Dalton Connect show. I mean, you have Adu zero points, Zakai nine points, Josiah Jordan James eight points, Mayshack two, Jordan Ganey six, Estrella two, Tobey two. Like that was some it, that was some disappointing stuff. Is like you know your 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 second your second scores and what they can do. And I've the frustrating part is. Watching a game, seeing a game, literally it's happened before where Zakai scores 20, right? I've seen him do it. He just did it I've against seen Triple J make threes. I've seen him score 15 points. I've yeah. seen A do score 12 and get five rebounds and five assists. Like I've seen that stuff happen. So that's where it gets so frustrating where it's like, why didn't it happen here? Why was the guy so cold on his shooting, right? Like, just couldn't make a three to save his life for a while in that game. Just really couldn't give Dalton any help. Any of the guys could. And I don't know. Like, I really feel that Triple J kind of just stopped shooting because he went on a hot start right at the right at the beginning and scored eight points in the first like 10 minutes and I, then didn't score again. And he did that against Michigan. He didn't even shoot again. 
He did that against Michigan a couple of years ago when we ended up losing to them uh, when they had Hunter Dickerson. He was like kind of filling it up. And I love when he drives in and does that little eight footer, 10 footer, 12 footer. I like it. He has a three every once in a while. And yeah, I don't, I, it was just, it was what it was not is we had seen this script a couple of times this year and we all said, that's not what, what can happen. We, someone else has to be there. You can't be. And I hate it too, because it puts so much pressure on Dalton, but then it's like, it's not even a good offense. It's at least, with Purdue, it's an offense where they work it down into him, and he, he's got an easy two with us. It's hand the ball to Dalton, and he's got to start 35 feet away from the basket and make something happen, and it's, it's just it's just tough. It's it's tough on him, but, you yeah. know, and there, were, and there were open shots. Like you said, it wasn't like we weren't getting good looks, and they just weren't falling. I mean, even poor Santi, who's had the yips, he gets in, has the top of the key, pulls the trigger, and it goes – I mean, he had a real bad miss, but then he has another one that's atop the key, and it goes literally all the way in and out. And I'm like, that would have been huge for us. It would have been huge for him. But, you know, I just – it's weird because I I was, like, pissed, but I wasn't because it was like, Reed, you knew this was going to happen. Like, you knew, exactly. this was, you knew this is what it was going to be. So be happy with the Elite Eight, which I'm very happy with the Elite Eight. I, I obviously wish we'd go to the Final Four. I would have loved nothing more. I was – visualizing i was fantasizing it watching like these guys hug and put the hats on in our first final four and get back there for rick and it's just like Dude, if we if we we had if we, we had made it, we, if we would have made it past purdue we're going to the national champion like we would have we could beat nc state mm-hmm. we already have we already beat them once this year like so i wholeheartedly would have been like holy crap we're gonna play uconn in the national championship yeah yeah, and it and 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 that would have been awesome. I mean, NC State's much different than when we played them early in the year. And I I I love watching DJ Burns, but I also love uh, Conley. I also love DJ Horn. I love. I was telling you and Logan, I was talking about DJ Horn on the way to the bachelor party a couple weeks ago because I watched him and that. No, I'm gonna. North be, I mean, hell, I'm gonna be rooting hard for DJ Burns. I hope we all he are. goes we all are. off versus Purdue. But I'm telling you, if that man like, can't how, defend. I know that. But that, but the, that's what I'm saying is like, how are they gonna, how are they gonna ref the game, Kyler? And that's what I was gonna talk about is I've been so, I just had such mixed emotions. Like you knew this was gonna happen, but then it's like, then I get pissed because I'm like, it shouldn't. Like that should not be the case. That guy should not get every single call. But if you are gonna get him every call, how is it that he's he is absolutely fouling people? And it's like, yeah. what are we? what are we doing here? And it's like, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I know we're the, and the other thing is too, is like, we're the fan of the losing team. So like, it's almost like we don't even get credit for saying something that is true. And there's even people that are texting me that are not fans of Tennessee. You see it all over social media that they're not fans of Tennessee. And they're like, this is unwatchable. This is stupid. This is bad for the game. And yeah, all I can hope is that UConn or, or NC state beats these guys. Cause it's, I, if I just will feel very, very disdain, not because they beat us. And it's not even the brand of basketball. I love big man play. It's the, it's the cheesiness. It's the, it's the yeah. uh, kind of BS of it. No. And I literally had not watched a Purdue game all year until the NCAA tournament. And I already knew that Zach Eady was getting a lot of calls. Be- Everybody was talking about it. Every yeah. podcast I listened to, sports show I listened to, they were like, the Zach Eady guy's up for National Player of the Year, and he draws about 10 fouls a game. Like, it was like – like, everyone understood. That is why I didn't feel confident about the Purdue game. That's not what I'm upset about. I'm not upset about him drawing fouls. I get why he's able to do it because he is so big – that when you're trying to defend him, a lot of times he coming into you up in a shot, it's like the only thing you can touch are his arms. Like it's just trying to control him. He's bigger, his weight, it, it, it happens. What I'm upset about is fouls on him. They yeah. don't call a single one. They don't yeah. – any kind of rebound that he's going for and throws a bow – you're not calling a foul. I got guys on the floor after the rebound from him and rest are just chalking it up to, Oh, he's bigger and stronger. No, 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 no. How is he using the strength? Is he using it legally? That is where I'm at where it's like, listen, I, I understand he's drawing fouls. I understand 
that guys have to pretty much foul him to defend him. Like that is part of it. Like you got to be tough and get your base and like be strong on him. But you can't tell me this man only committed one foul in 40 minutes of gameplay. There's no way you can tell me that. Like I agree. I, as as a seven four dude who played ninety eight percent of the game, that's 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 impossible. He is yeah. not. He is a good basketball player. He is not that good of a basketball player where he never fouls. Agreed. No one is. And it just makes it. It just made it worse too. Like how I'm. I get that you're excited and fired up, but he talks his talk as if. He is DJ Burns, as if he is another one of these guys. And it's funny because he's such the villain just because the way that he plays, that he is just a bitch, and then about stuff, and then, like, coming out. And and I, I'm fine with players, uh, you know, in sports, when you put all the time, effort, energy, and – to, to 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 win and to be great at something and when you finally get there like I'm cool with people talking their talk and enjoying the moment because of everything that goes into it and so it was a little annoying like him taking a shot at Rick and be like yeah, even Tennessee like their coach overlooked me like I get it okay like it stinks that he says that I don't like him necessarily taking a shot but I also I'm like well if I was him and I didn't get recruited by a bunch of player places or whatever the case may be then like this is your moment but just it's it's like we the Amer- America loves DJ Burns for a reason, and everyone can't stand him for a reason. It's like DJ Burns is a dog, and you're just a bitch that just gets all the calls. And and like even if it's not his fault, even it's like he's like, hey guys, what do you want me to do? Tell the rest not to call. It's like, hey, it's like it is what it is. That's what I would say to him. Like it is what it is. Like you're gonna get them. That's fine. But it's like it, they're not worthy. Like hey, big ass. You're, there's no way you didn't foul anyone one time. Like, that's what I would say to him. So it's like, that's why I just don't want them to win because it, I just feel like it would I, – I feel like if they win, it almost solidifies something that's fake, if that makes sense. And so – Yep, I'm totally with you, that and, you can win a national championship by getting fouls called. Right. Right. It's like it's like it's like the James Harden stuff. Like, that's why I can't stand James Harden. I can't stand can't stand. And I like the NBA. I know you aren't a big NBA guy, but like I love the NBA and I just feel like James Harden so bad for basketball and stuff. But anyways, to wrap it up, uh, that's why it's been so weird for me, because I didn't th- think we'd win. And then it was a close game, but then it wasn't. And then I'm like, I just don't like I would have probably legitimately lost my mind and happiness and excitement and just defecated all over myself out of excitement if we'd actually pulled it off, but I just never saw it happening. I would have like really been like, it's over. We won. Like I would have had to see it to truly believe it. But anyways, for me, I'll be, I'll be quick. Um, It was a great season for Tennessee, regular season champs, some really, really nice wins, some great moments. I finally got my player who's just an absolute um, three-level specimen score NBA prospect, and that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I personally, Kyler, am not going to be like, well, we just lost our chance at the Final Four. We just had one of our best players ever, and we blew that. I'm not going to say that because, to be honest with you, I didn't trust enough of the guys around him, and that's not a shot taken. They just weren't consistent enough for me. I mean, I've watched Triple J for damn seven years. I've watched Santi for seven years, eight yeah. years. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I've watched those guys. Not that I don't like them. I like them a lot. But, like, I've seen this team. And I knew, hey, like, that's why I picked us to lose to Creighton because I know Dalton's going to show up. I know Zakai's going to give the effort. But I don't know who else is going to put the ball in the basket. I know we're going to play defense. I know we're going to give effort. But you have to put the ball in the hoop. And I didn't <laughs> know that. So, so I don't – I don't – I'm not going to say that we lost our best chance because we have Dalton. It's – Maybe in a couple years, if it's Rick or whoever else, we get guys that we've got three to four to five really, really good college hoopers, you know, uh, and it's not so reliant. You know, you go back to where you have an Admiral, you have a, a Grant, you have a Jordan Bone, you have a Bowden, you got multiple guys that kind of do it. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying these guys couldn't. And I'm not saying that those no. guys are better. I'm just saying it's 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 more of a, it's 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 like I mean it's like UConn like 
these guys that these teams are so good, they're just so deep. Even when Kentucky was really good, now they had all NBA guys, but they they were like six, seven deep. That it's just like, wait, Anthony, like, wait, they used to have Anthony Davis. Now they got Carl Anthony Towns. They have Devin Booker and freaking someone else like coming off the off the bench. Like, what's going on here? It's like, and I'm not saying we have to be to that level, but you got to have more than one guy that you can truly count on night in, night out. To win, exactly. to, to, to go to a Final Four. So, yes. great season. Great season. I'm happy with it. I enjoyed it. Uh, we we kind of solidified, like you said. We were a top 10, top 8, top 5 team all year. We got to Elite 8. Technically, we wanted to argue we could be the, the fifth best team in the nation. We didn't make the Final Four. But, you know, so there's some of that wiggle room. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the season. I am, too. I, I, I'm happy with an Elite 8. You know, uh, I – I'm totally with you about those guys. Like, obviously, you need more than one dude to score the basket. This is about scoring points here, people. Um, yeah. I don't, you know, what you said, like, the window's closed now that we went this far with this predominantly score. Okay. No one knew Dalton was going to be this before the season. Go out and find another one in the transfer portal. That's what's great about the transfer portal. You got another opportunity to do it again this year. So do Hold it. On. Hold on. Hold on. I agree with you. Go out and find someone. Don't say go out and try to find another Dalton Connect because Dalton Connect was special. But what you can yeah. do, but what you can do is go out and find two or three guys who are pretty darn good to really good college players. They don't have to necessarily be great all Americans. But yeah, I mean, look at NC State, like their whole their whole starting roster is transfers. So I get exactly what you're like your your turnaround can be so much better now in the yeah. transfer portal. Quicker. Um, Quicker. Um, you know, it it Shout out the guys, and you know we, you know we give them a little bit of hard time because of the inconsistency in the performances. But obviously, just like the amount of effort, we've never questioned the amount of effort out of those guys. And like Santi, Triple J, Zakai, those guys don't. I don't think they're going to be playing anymore. We're going to lose a good amount of people this year, but just appreciate what they did do. Um, I think this team took its full potential, right? It it really extended its full potential that it could uh, to that point. Say, yeah, I think that's a great point because I get a little annoyed when I hear callers on Sports Talk or people are like, you know what? I know we lost, but I still love this team because they gave great effort. And it's like, yeah, at some point I respect that, but you also have to be winners. Like, I'm not going to go watch a yeah. team that's six, six that just gives great effort. Like, me personally, like, I don't get – like, that. that's not why I root. That's not why I play is to give good effort. Like, I'm going to win. Now, giving good effort is a nice consolation prize to fans if it's a heartbreak. Like, damn, they gave it everything they had. The ball didn't bounce their way. But I, I respect that they – played hard wearing the T like I would play, mm. like you did play. But at certain points, like if Tennessee had gone and lost first round or second round, and I get those calls like, I still live Triple J and Santi, they gave their all for Tennessee. It's like, yeah, sweet, dude, they did. But like right now is not the time. We just choke. Like keep it moving. <laughs> like you play sports to win. You don't play sports yeah. for effort. So anyways, yeah. sorry. Just, but no, you're, you, you're you fine. Hit the, you hit the nail on the head. They at least accomplished what they should have accomplished, and that's why I'm good with the effort they gave. Exactly. I'm good with the effort they gave. Um, I think, like, one point about that Purdue game that I was thinking about is, like, Zakai playing every minute of the Creighton game. The last, like, four minutes of that Purdue game, you could tell he was wiped. Yeah. Like, he was struggling on defense to keep up because he's just worn the hell out. Um, and that's just like a, Hey, we needed you. I, I like, sorry to this man, but that's what the team needed at the time. And we tried to make it through with you playing all these minutes. I'm sorry you had to, but that's like where our hand, like our hands were tied kind of because oh, like we had no other options. Yeah, exactly. You didn't have any other options. You had to have Zakai out there. So uh, but yeah, I'm with you. This team, this team reached its full potential. If say Purdue had lost an earlier round, 
then I would have said we should have won that game. Yeah. I, I would have I would have seen it differently afterwards. But because we were going against Purdue, what we had to go against, who we had to go against, that's what made me set that line. And when it comes to Ricky B, Barnes, you know, I think a lot of people do compare him against Bruce because of what Bruce did for the program. Uh, you know, people try and go back and say, you know, men's Tennessee basketball has never been a thing. Like it was football and women's basketball. Those were the things. Men's basketball was not the thing at the university. And I think we both agree that Bruce is what put it on the map, is what put Tennessee basketball in everyone's sight, guys, in people's, you know, where they're starting to pay attention. Now Rick Barnes has the keys to that program and is able to take advantage of fan. Kyler, you there? Yes, I'm still here. When Vol Baseball started winning, we saw how desperate this fan base was to be like, we have a winning team grasping, okay? So everyone's searching for that winning basketball team. I don't think Rick has gotten to where all of our fandom wants to be. Um, And it's, I don't know. I'm just in a hard spot with him because he's got one final four in his entire coaching career. He gets to the tournament a lot. There's just not quite there and I don't know if that's ever going if he's ever going to get over the hump but I'm also like should we be getting over the hump right we're I mean we're a football school I love basketball I like men's basketball I like to watch basketball it's not my favorite sport football is my favorite sport but we're a football school like we're an SEC Kentucky's a basketball school. Duke, Kansas, Gonzaga, UConn, Michigan State. Let me call out all the basketball school teams and you tell me how good their football programs are. Yeah. It's like. Well, I, you know, I, I get why you're bringing this up because you sent me the video of Candace Parker and Bruce talking, which I thought was great television. It was all over social media. I saw it live. And I, it, this is probably not the place and time. I mean, people know if they do watch us, they know that you and I love Bruce. He's our coach. I, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll argue to the death that Bruce is a better basketball coach than Rick. I don't think that's even really arguable. I mean, I think Bruce is a better basketball coach than Rick. I mean, I think they're both great. But who's been better for Tennessee? I mean, I, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to Bruce because it was literally in the grave and he resurrected. I mean, he. There actually there was nothing to resurrect because we really weren't anything but Bert and Ernie and a few fleeting years. Uh, but Bruce is what turned it around. And yeah, I know that when Rick came in, that it wasn't uh, it wasn't in great shape, but it was probably better than what it had been because at least people knew that you could get Tennessee basketball to some heights. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I know why you're bringing it up. It's probably not the time and place, but we we can look at it later. But for me, I've kind of given up on the whole Rick Barnes thing because he's going to be here as long as he wants to be here. They're not going to fire him. They can't fire him. And so I'm like, and so for me, it is what it is. And I've just kind of been like, yeah, whatever. Like, I don't let it get, let it frustrate me anymore. Yeah. I mean, I think we're, I think we're sitting where Texas was about 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, all right, this is what we're doing. We're getting to the NCAA, you know, we're getting to the tournament every year, but don't know if we're going to win it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I know we didn't make it past, a team that we should have beat last year. We were favored to beat, but he gave me a great, a great memory in beating Duke. We got to the Elite Eight this year, and I don't fault him for losing to to Purdue. So I, I guess he's in good graces in my in my spot, which not, obviously he doesn't care about. But yeah, I just they're not gonna, they're not going to fire him. So, anyways, Damn, did great, you see that read? What he said about me? <laughs> great, uh, great pod. Uh, I, I officially got to go lay down. I've been standing for 59 minutes now, so I do need to lay down and start to age. Yeah. But uh, I'm excited to tell everyone that you're coming in. You're going to go to practice. That's all that we're really important. I'll probably even tweet that out 
Uh, I'll tweet this out tomorrow, and then uh, probably on Thursday and Friday and Saturday, I'm just going to keep tweeting out that you're going. That's going to drop yeah. next week. See ya. Yeah. All right. See you, brother. Bye. <laughs> Take care of that back. Uh, all right. Thank you guys for watching and listening. As Reed said, I will be going to practice this Saturday. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a regular practice or a scrimmage practice, um, but I'll get to watch some of those guys, uh, some of the newcomers, um, and maybe be able to report back for you. So looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, so if you're watching, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Uh, if you're listening, rate and review, download, re-download, and follow us on all those listening platforms you might use. If uh, if uh, you can also follow us on social media uh, at Pancakes and Bacon for our main account on Twitter at Pancakes and Bacon underscore RTI on Instagram, uh, and then for Reed is just at R Bacon twenty six on Twitter. For myself at Kyler Curvison on all social medias, so check me out there. Uh, yeah, what a good season. Stinks. We, uh, you know, went out in the Elite Eight, but a pretty good team that we lost to. Um, I'm proud of this team and what they were able to accomplish. Uh, it's now baseball season and then getting into football, spring practice, all that good stuff. So going to be exciting few months. Uh, just really appreciate you guys. Thank you for being awesome fans. And as always, go Vols.